This is Chad with Sackville.Live outside the relatively new Cobequid Community Health Center. But today, I'm going to tell you about the time where I went into the old Cobequid Multi-Service Center and came out way worse. Today on Sackville Sunday Stories. <laughs> On a very cold and dark winter morning in 1989, I made my way to Cobequid Multi-Service Center for a routine blood screening. I was taking some prescription medication and the doctor just said, you know what, we should go down and check your blood and make sure everything's okay. Tickety-boo. Now in those days, I absolutely 100% loved school. That's where all my friends were. So. In order to get the most out of my day, I figured I'll go down first thing early in the morning and then go directly to school from the multi-service center. It was awesome. My mom and dad were away. They had to go up to New Brunswick that week. And I had to get to Cobbequid Multi-Service Center, so I had to take a cab. So I called the cab. It's like six in the morning. Cab shows up, takes me down. They started doing blood screening at 7 a.m. But uh, the list was a uh, first come, first serve basis. So I figured, well, I'm gonna be there first. Then I'm gonna get on the list, get my blood taken at seven, and then go straight to school. It's a foolproof plan. Now, when I arrived and checked in at the multi-service center, um, I figured I was in for a wait, so I brought a book along. We didn't have smartphones or any electronic gadgets to keep us company, so I brought a book. The book was a novel called Salem's Lot. And it was a horror novel by Stephen King, and it's all about vampires. Very smart and very tricky vampires, as they usually are. Probably not the best idea to not have anything to eat or drink, bring a very terrifying novel about vampires to get my blood taken, but that's what I did. I sat in the lobby and just read through this book, and I am just pulled right into it. I am intrigued, and I'm like, Oh my God, oh my God. Call my name, Ooh. Oh, hey, yeah, 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 I'm ready to go. They take me into the area to draw my blood. I sit down, feeling pretty good, look up and on the post, there's a poster on the wall. Coincidentally, that poster is of a vampire, a vampire's face, like this, <sighs> big teeth, blood on the teeth too. And the poster read, lab technicians, are not vampires, which kind of, hmm? They're here to help. That threw up some red flags for me, right? Because I've been pretty into this book and I'm thinking to myself, why would they say that they're not vampires? Like, I'm not coming in and asserting that they are vampires, but they seem to have this contrary position that they're leading with. Kind of, it kind of made me think. It would be like if I went into McDonald's and said, yeah, Big Mac fries and a Coke. Oh, and by the way, I'm not the Hamburglar, right? Girl would be like, what? Kathy, come here. Yeah, we got a possible uh, Hamburglar situation. Oh, really? Why? Why? What's happening? Well, this guy placed his order and he said he's not the Hamburglar. They'd be like, only the Hamburglar would say he's not the Hamburglar. Unprovoked. So I had my had my ire up. I was like, hmm, something's, something's going on here. And I hadn't anything to eat or drink since midnight. Draw my blood, everything's fine. Walked out to the front gate, little reception area. Hey, would you mind calling me a taxi? No problem, call me a taxi. Walked through, there was a set of automatic doors and then just kind of like a little vestibule and a second set of automatic doors. Now that was to keep the heat inside. And it was a freezing cold morning, still dark outside. And between those two doors, they had a heater. And because it was so cold, that heater was just on 100% steaming, hot between these two doors. And I'm standing between these two doors and I had this big heavy wool coat on. And there I am just standing between the two doors, waiting for my taxi. Visions of vampires just rolling through my head. And it might've been a combination of the heat, the blood loss, the lack of food or drink, or maybe a combination of all those things. I fainted. Now, there's nothing wrong with fainting. That's, a, that's, it's not good. It's dangerous, but because it was a winter time, somebody had leaned a snow shovel 
against the wall. And it wasn't regular snow shovel. It was uh, the, one of those scoop shovels, big scoop shovel, nice and wide. And that metal base was laying there and I just fell forward straight, passed out. I landed on the snow shovel, neck first, right here. Like just envision it. I'm not very tall, but I'm still falling from about five and a half feet straight down neck onto a shovel. Like if I wanted to try to guillotine myself, that would be the way you do it. You just stand there and throw your neck onto the shovel. That's what I did. Slice my neck, got me right around here, cut my neck right open, right? So I got myself right there and now I'm really out and I'm on my back. A very nice man, I assume he's a nice man. I never got a chance to talk to him. Uh, comes running over to see if I'm okay. My neck sliced open and I'm passed out on my back. If you've never been unconscious before, when you wake up, it's not like the movies, right? Arnold Schwarzenegger will get hit in the head with a board with a concrete brick on the end of it and he'll get knocked out and he'll just wake up and he'll be like, surprise! <laughs> right? And he's got all of his faculties. You don't. If you're unconscious and you wake up, you don't have access to your recent memories right away. Your cognitive ability is severely impaired. You're, you're, you're basically a drunk baby, right? You're just like, oh, oh, oh. you don't know where you are. You don't remember going to Cobbaquid. You don't remember the blood test. So you're laying there. Eyes start to open. And there's this man that came over to help me. He was down on his knees and he had his hands on my chest and his face was like right off of my face, looking into my eyes to see if I'm okay. Now, I don't know I'm a cob quit. I think I'm in my bed. I open my eyes and there's a dude right in my face. And I'm like, oh God, my neck's hurting. I go like this, blood, blood on my hands. And there's nothing but vampires in my mind. So I'm thinking this dude is chowing down on my neck. And again, you don't come up with like, oh, uh, pithy observations, you're scared. So you just go, and I started slapping my hands. I didn't have coordination, so I'm just slapping him like a, again, like a baby, a drunk baby, just slapping him, slapping his face. And I jump up and I grab my neck and I'm starting to figure out, slowly starting to figure out where I am. And then all of the people that were in the waiting room, they come running over to help too, because they're all nice people. And I just got my hand on my neck like this, and I'm pointing with the other hand. I'm just like, stay away from me, stay away from me. And they're all like, no, no, come back inside, come back inside. And I'm thinking, well, that's, that's the words of a tricky vampire. They want you back into their lair so they can finish you off. So I just start backing away. Now a very nice nurse came over. She was like, no, honey, you need to come inside. You've got an injury. We'll take a look at it. There's nothing to worry about. And she almost got me. She almost got me. I was just like, oh, yeah, really? Okay, I'll come inside. Then I saw the lights in my taxi pull up. And I went, freak you guys. And then I ran and I jumped in the taxi. So now I'm running out of an emergency room with a sliced open neck. I jump into the cab, holding on to it. I'm like, get me to Sackville High, please, right away. The guy's like, oh my God, kid, are you all right? And I'm like, oh no, I'm fine, give me the sack for high. Whoosh, off the sack for high, paid the cabbie. Went into the washroom, got some wet paper towel, held it on my neck all day, all day. So it wasn't a real social day, but everybody was asking about my neck and I'm like, oh, I sliced my neck open today. Um, but I made it out. My neck is healed mostly. And uh, I have a new, improved appreciation for lab technicians and those good citizens. Buddy, I'm sorry I slapped you in the face. And imagine his side of the story. Imagine him like, man, I got home, uh, gets home from work. He's like, man, I was down there. Some 16 year old kid in a wool trench coat fainted, fell next shirt first on a shovel, called me a vampire, slapped me in the face and jumped in a cab. That's the real story. I want to hear that guy. So if you were that man that tried to help me and I called you a number of swear words, with the word vampire interlaced uh, in it. Reach out, let's reconnect. Um, that's it for Sackful Sunday Stories. I will see you next Sunday with a new story here on Sackful.Live.